Right, so Vicky Parrot, you're Alex a journalist. Boy. I am. You know about electric cars. So they say. What car have we got over there? That is a Polestar 2. Uh, now, Polestar is an interesting one because it's part of Volvo, but I don't think many people actually know that because I don't think Polestar ever became as big as like AMG or M or any of that stuff. So I think it's interesting because it's got the potential to really stand kind of alone, separate to Volvo, even though it is sort of tied to it. So what did Polestar used to do? Polestar used to tune Volvos, believe it or not, but nobody really bought them. Much as some of them were cool, and I don't think they ever really established their name, like I said, like AMG and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's much easier to have Polestar as a standalone brand than, for instance, AMG, like Mercedes is doing. Um, so I think in that way you could end up with a much more sort of <clears throat> Lexus and Toyota style kind of situation where you get a distinctly different brand to, to the other, probably even further apart than that, because they're doing much more bespoke vehicles. So modern. So, so what does modern, what does new Polestar do? New Polestar has basically approached the electric market. So they've taken the Polestar brand and they've gone, right, this is something we can do something completely new and different with. And they've approached the electric car market and they said, we're going to do premium electric cars and we're going to do them right. And we're going to do them completely differently to any of the other mainstream manufacturers. And what you've ended up with is something much closer to Tesla, sort of a tech company rather than a conventional automotive brand. I think that's kind of what they're aiming for. So they're all electric all the time ish. Yes. Polestar sort one of. wasn't quite Polestar one, yeah, wasn't wasn't quite that, but it was also extremely expensive and extremely limited. So it was sort of a bit more, I think, launching the brand, giving you an idea of the design, kind of what they're aiming for. Uh, and I think Polestar two is the real deal. That's the car that, you know, the mainstream masses will take notice of, and that's the car that will get the brand out there. So what? So t talk us around the Polestar two. What what have we got today? So we have got a Polestar two. It has got four hundred and two brake horsepower, four wheel drive. Um, interestingly, Polestar have swerved the temptation to give it an astronomical 0 to 62 time, which is very easy to do with electric cars, because they're focusing on, uh, well, they describe it as they want to give quality and they want to give drivability, rather than going for the low hanging fruit of like YouTube drag videos and that kind of thing. Don't anybody mention the Tesla Model 3. <laughs> So uh, that is kind of what they're going for. They're trying to do a different take on it. But let's face it, it is a Tesla Model 3 rival and it's the first car that is a direct rival to that car. Um, I think it's the first, actually the first manufacturer that could possibly give Tesla something to worry about in, in terms of really bringing it to them on the electric car front. But we'll see. So yeah, so that is the Polestar 2. So it's hatchback, so it could be a family car, but it's got lots of power, costs from just under £50,000, unless you go for the performance pack, which brings all kinds of fancy 20-way adaptive Oland dampers, which goes some way to telling you something about what Polestar wants to prove about the way that thing drives. So 20 -way, has that yep. got 20-way <clears throat> adjustable dampers? Yes, so you literally have to get your Allen key out and adjust the adjust the top mounts and get the get the get your choose it, choose your damper settings. Why? Old school. Um, what is the point of this? Who on doesn't a want adjustable? I know, car. I know. It's a family electric car that you can also get out and spanner at the weekend if you want to. Um, it's a very good question. I'm not convinced that many Polestar 2 owners are ever going to actually bother changing the dampers. <laughs> But uh, you never know, you never know. And I like, I like the message that it gives. I like the, I like the idea that <clears throat> they are trying to cater to the people that might care that much about the way the car handles, that they're gonna get out there and start tweaking it by degrees and be like, you know, I'm gonna try this this weekend. And, and then eventually so they're gonna get to their perfect kind of damper setting, yeah. They care so much, they're going to buy a two ton electric family yeah, car. Yeah, and, exactly. And fiddle with it. So, well, yeah. um, final question for you. Mm -hmm. the, the theme of Revs 3, Rev Hard with a Vengeance, which I still think you should have called it, um, is restoration. Yes. So how do you think Polestar fits in with that? Oh, well, I think it's going to be a while before anybody's going to be restoring a Polestar. Um, but I think the electric car has got a place here because ultimately we are staring down the barrel of a full transition to electric cars. It's going to happen. It needs to happen. And I know there are a lot of people who love cars who are a bit averse to it because electric cars are a whole other thing. They don't feel the same. And understandably, you know, there's a bit of a bit of unhappy feelings towards it. But I believe that electric cars can be really fun. I think they can appeal to the enthusiast. And I think in 20 years time, you might be looking back at some of the electric cars that come out right now. The Polestar being one of them, actually, which could be heralded as something of a modern classic and this kind of thing, because these are the cars that are really going to wave a flag for the electric car, especially the Polestar with those dampers and making the point that you can make an electric car fun. Don't look at me like that, Goy. <laughs> Or Porsche Taycan, this kind of stuff. There are electric cars out there that are genuinely fun. Yes, they're heavy. Yes, they're electric. You don't get the character of a petrol engine, I know. But, right, we are going to go electric. And I think we've got to embrace it. And I think 
more than the Polestar and the Porsche and all this kind of thing. People are proving already that they can be fun. So restoration, I think we're way off for that, but it's worth having an electric car here because they are fun. They can appeal to an enthusiast. And I think there's a lot to be said for that Polestar. The Polestar 2 then. Okay, 402 brake. It's got four wheel drive, 50-50 split. Uh, it's also got like 470 odd foot-pounds of torque. So this thing does shift, but like I said, Polestar have very deliberately avoided giving this some kind of crazy 0 to 62 mile per hour time, even though it would be very easy on an electric car um, because they want to make a point about the fact that they're concentrating on quality and drivability rather than straight line pace. So it's a bit of a, you know, <laughs> it's a bit of a trying to make a statement to Tesla basically, I suspect. But I'm with them. I think that having something like this, and this has got the steering on this is lovely, sort of silky and kind of oily build of progression as you go around a corner. It's really lovely. And those dampers, I know Alex will uh, laugh at me for this, but they really do. I think they must make a big difference to this car because the damper rebound and the way it controls its body going around the corners is fantastic. And I tell you what, I know that that's all very easy to kind of sneer at that when we're out here on our little track at Bista. That stuff makes a big difference on the road. So the way this car controls its weight and the way it steers means that it's actually really good fun. So you can just chill out a bit, potter around, and it still feels really nice because it's got that real fluidity to it. And it's got a real sense of kind of balance to it that means you can kind of get involved rather than just feeling like you want to do a standing start everywhere and scare the bejesus out of everybody. And uh, I really like that about the Polestar. I think it really is a clever thing on that front. I think it hits a real happy medium for being kind of fun and involving, but also just a decent family car. You've got luggage up front and in the back, so you can store your cables under the under the, what, the bonnet, basically. Um, and you've got a big boot, you can sit two people in the back. It is, it's an electric family car, isn't it? But it's also really nice to drive. And, uh, and it does shift. I mean, I say it's not got a crazy 0 to 62 time. This is, it's still like 4.7 to 62. Do you remember when that used to be like Banzai crazy? And now that feels absolutely ordinary, doesn't it? But it's still in practice because of the way it delivers that torque. This feels properly swift. It really does. And I like that. The way it kind of kicks out of a corner is fantastic. I also like the fact that this doesn't have um, different drive modes. Well, it does, it does have different steering modes, I'll give you that. So it's got light, firm and standard, um, but that's it. It doesn't have a sport mode. It doesn't have like loads of different kind of settings that you can put it in apart from that. And I think that's good. I think that sort of says a lot about the fact that they've tried to set this car up to be right. Um, just, you know, out of the box really. Um, so that is kind of the pole stuff for you. The important stuff, uh, that probably most people will be worried about rather than uh, what level they're going to put their Olins on is the range and charging. So this is a 78 kilowatt hour car which translates to a 292 mile range by official standards. I'd say probably 250 in the real world, a bit less than that if you're out on the motorway or if it's winter. And most people will live with that very easily, especially because this has got 150 kilowatt rapid charging. So plug it in at home and it will take probably around about 12 or 13 hours to charge up plug it into a rapid charger of 150 kilowatts and you're going to get about 80% in I think some sort of 40 minutes so you know you can't argue with that really and I just really like the fact that Polestar is doing something different and uh, I think it's doing it well and I think this is going to be a really really big hit.